Oh hey, this is Matt Fetcher from Audio Kit. Let's get started. What is up, fam? Today I'm excited because I have an interview with Alex B from Samplist. He created this app in just three weeks with Audio Kit. This is an inspiring story because Alex was not an audio programmer before this. In less than a month, he released this awesome app into the App Store. So let's talk to him about how he did it. It's been uh, an exciting day because I've uh, wake up. I woke up this morning and I was like number ten in US. And then I climbed up to number six, then number four, and it was freaking amazing. <laughs> top four app. That's awesome. Yeah, top four paid apps in music category, yeah. I'm, I'm very um, humbled by, by the reaction it got because uh, I put a lot of love into it, and I, I know it's like my dream app. I mean, in my head, I, I have a lot of stuff that I want to build for it and I think it's going to be amazing if I plan to if I manage to do all that yeah and um, yeah it uh, it's nice because people resonated with with my enthusiasm what's cool about this app is you can load your own files your wave files your beats your loops and then add slices and play them with inner app audio or a mini keyboard so I just added a slice to a beat here and you can play it chromatically you're a musician, right? Is that what inspired yeah. you to make this? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I play guitar and keyboards, but mainly guitar. And um, basically, it has been a dream of mine to make some kind of a music app like since eight years ago when I left uh, the agency where I used to work at. And uh, I started coding three years ago, and now I felt like it's the time to do something about it. Well, actually, Two years ago, I felt like it was time to do something because I've discovered Audio Kit. Oh, and nice. I played with it, and it was amazing because in like five minutes, I had a tunable oscillator that was playing sound, and I was like, whoa, holy shit, it plays sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My favorite part is you can download your own samples from Dropbox or iCloud and then chop them up and then play them back in different orders. Do you feel it's like part of the, the influence was the, you know, the audio bus forum encouraging you and people, people were on your side from the, the get go. It was the vibe from the audio bus forum, which drove me to, to push it out this fast. I actually had some advices from uh, uh, people that told me not to rush it, to sit it through and stuff like that. But I, <laughs> I couldn't wait, man. I, I had to put it out there because there were a lot of guys asking me for beta invites and stuff like that. So I decided to make it like a stable MVP and put it out there and then come up with lots of features because I have a, a very big pipeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hopefully the holy grail is to make it uh, like an audio unit because that's the main reason I've built it. Uh, but uh, I think it's a... Hard roads to, to get there because <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, what you know, uh, you know. Hopefully, I mean that's the goal. I think it's a solvable problem. Uh, you know, it's it's not going to happen overnight, but eventually, uh, you know, we want to help make AUV three programming easy for everyone. <laughs> for those, well, uh, the audio bus integration was like a five minutes. Task. I mean, it took me longer to register uh, an API key for audio bus than implementing the whole thing. So, thanks go to Michael Tyson for that because he actually, um, you know, sat down with Ari and helped integrate that with Audio Kit to make it easier for people. So it's from the man himself, Michael. So nice. Nice. shout yeah. out to him, you know, for making it yeah, easier yeah. for all developers. <laughs> You know, I think the first thing that um, really impressed people was how good the design was and how quickly it came together. So. I'm guessing you're some sort of designer by trade? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, actually, I have a bachelor degree in computer science, but oh, wow. I worked for 13 or 14 years as a, started as a web designer, then graphic designer, front-end developer, stuff like that. But yeah, mainly I'm a UI designer. So it was easy peasy to design the UI. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly made it look easy. Um, I, it's certainly better than I could do or probably most people watching. So what's your, what's your workflow? Are you using like paint code or um, Adobe or Sketch or what do you use? Well, uh, I'm using Sketch. I work full time on Sketch like since it came out. It's amazing, especially if you build UIs for apps because you have those symbols and you can, it's basically like Xcode. 
you have symbols that are dynamic you can change stuff in there and make it makes it really easy for you to work with it and uh, the workflow i don't know it was kind of chaotic for for samplist because i started with some sliders in xcode it looked yeah. like crap uh, it played some sound and then I wanted to have some knobs and I designed the knobs. I actually got a photo of a, a tape player from uh, Dieter Rams, you know, the guy who designed stuff for Brown. Uh, so I love those metal knobs and stuff like that. So I started with the picture of that. I designed the knobs and then come up with a UI around the those knobs. It, uh, it went uh, pretty well. <laughs> uh, yeah, overall it's really co cohesive, especially because it seems like you were figuring out like the front and back end at the same time, doing it all at well, once. Well, that's what I did, yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I kept designing stuff and then exported as PDFs into Xcode, all the icons and stuff. Tested out how they look, how they felt like when you twist the knobs. But I find it easier to export like a couple of PDF layers from Sketch and you know rotate them with a UI gesture recognizer is way easier than designing the whole thing in code. Yeah. Because you export it as a PDF and it's scalable. So yeah, whatever works for you. I mean, it works great and uh, it seems like you did it really fast, so kudos. Do you normally build apps this quickly or is this just uh, this kind of a culmination of all your experiences come together? Well, uh, I, I don't consider myself a very experienced developer because I have like four years of building native mobile apps. But I think it was, I, I had the motivation because I really wanted this app for myself firsthand. So yeah, right. That was what motivated me. Actually, a big part of it I wrote uh, when I was in a weekend at my mother-in-law. I don't, didn't have any internet connection. <laughs> so, this is this the way to get away from your mother-in-law? I hope she's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she doesn't speak English. So, this one is just for me. Uh, you know, uh, I really <laughs> like how you have those, those little layers that you put on when you select like the, the selection. Like how did, you, how did you make those? That custom control where you add those? Yeah, yeah. well, um, uh, initially, when I designed it, I was afraid that I couldn't implement it, but it's actually a very nifty idea. I have a scroll view, which okay. has a, um, I found a class on CocoaPods that renders the wave file. Uh, so I have a scroll view with the wave file below, like an e it's an image view. And above it, I have a um, super view, which has the, the selection, the slices. Okay. And those are some custom UI view classes, which whenever I move them, they have a delegate. So whenever one moves or resizes, it tells the delegate that it has been resized. And uh, I actually found a nifty way to transfer the, 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 the distance, like, like how much you, you resized it. So basically I measured the, the X point from the, the start of the super view. I, I make a percent of that. So it's how much X points from the super views width I've moved. And then I transfer those percents to the slicer and I calculate the percent from the sample length. So that, that's genius. That's remarkable. <laughs> yeah, very, it's a very good problem. I wasn't expecting it, it was going to fly, but it did. So <laughs> I was very happy. And so what I thought was really cool is that you actually um, import and export zip files. And do you have any recommendations for developers on what libraries to use and when dealing well, with um, I've uh, it's called actually zip. Yeah, that, uh, that was an afterthought idea, but I find it pretty cool because it gives the app another cool use. It, it makes like a Swiss knife so you can slice your, uh, your beat into, into separate hits and open them as a zip in, I don't know, Groovebox or uh, not Groovebox, Groove Rider. And it's, it was a cool idea because you can use the app only for that and it's also cool, so. Yeah, to, to me, that's the most valuable thing about this app is that you can visually slice up beats, like recite, like, <laughs> like yeah, recite exactly. and then play them back with a keyboard or interrupt audio or export them to Groove Rider or Beatmaker or whatever you want to do. And it's so quick and so easy. And 
that, that's is that's kind of the purpose of the app, right? Well, that's, that's the yeah, app. That, that's a lot of people were complaining about the pitch shifting quality and stuff like that. And I to, I told them, dudes, I've built this app to slice a beat into samples and play them like a like a like an MPC. Basically. Right. Yeah, that that's what I that got. Was the, the concept behind it. That's why you have the choke option in there and stuff like that. The chromatic mode is just like like you had the 16 levels on the MPC. So it's like a second uh, secondary feature it's like nice to yeah, have yeah, but it's yeah, not the core yeah. functionality of the apps <laughs> yeah you know what i did for saving presets i actually uh save the slice ranges in an array and export it as a json file with the same name as the sample so okay. whenever you load the sample if it finds a json file with the same name it reloads the slices also yeah yeah i think that's i think that's super smart and I, and I think JSON is the way to go. You know, I think we're going to see a, a trend of people going towards open file formats instead of everyone having their own proprietary closed binary files. You know, just yeah, since yeah. 2001. I, I didn't that. like the idea initially because if you open the files app, you see the JSON file in there. But I thought, well, what the heck? You can edit that or import it in whatever you want. And it's a, it's a flexible format because you can put in there the values for the ADSR, the filters, the, all that stuff. I am completely on board with this idea. And I think it encourages people if they want to just edit it with a text editor or yeah. it encourages people to build APIs. You know, they could build uh, some sort of web service of sampless presets that they could download off the web, you know, some oh, sort of endpoint. Yeah. Nope. That would be quite something. <laughs> it's all open. I think it encourages sharing and I think it encourages adoption and development and, and other developers to get involved. So I think, I think that's 100% on board with this idea. Another question for the for the, the people at home watching. Now that you are you're a full fledged audio app developer now that you've released <laughs> Yeah. Do you feel any like different? <laughs> How's it feel? It feels nice, especially since I've uh, uh, looked over the iTunes uh, top paid apps and I was above Bitmaker. <laughs> <laughs> I sent a screenshot to Matthew. <laughs> oh no. What do you say? <laughs> He didn't reply. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he wishes nothing but the best for you. Yeah. Do you use iOS a lot for music making now? I use a lot of, uh, of apps uh, for music making. And now that Ableton Live supports uh, link back and forth with the iPad. And also, I use Machine a lot on the desktop. So oh, oh, nice. It also has link. And it's amazing because I can sample in sync with the iPad. It's in iOS. Then I guess they added the ability to stream audio via the lightning cable and it's, I don't need a sound card anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. I don't think a lot of people know this, that you could just hook yeah, it button right there with a the lightning cable and it's, it's awesome. It also does MIDI. Yeah, yeah. It's like using it as an <laughs> external instrument. It's great. And I, I don't know if you know about it, but I just discovered this evening when I was playing in the simulator, you can see the simulator as a target in that audio MIDI setup application. So you yeah. can do a network connection between the Mac and the simulator, which is awesome because I was playing with the Logic keyboard <laughs> into the iOS simulator to test out polyphony. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how I make all, all my demo videos with FM players with a simulator and like connected to Ableton and just to do a screen record. <laughs> I haven't thought of that. I usually use the screen recording from iOS, but I found out it has some bugs. If you use like several apps in audio kit, it pipes the audio only from the frontmost app. Or if you record your voice over it, it, I don't know what it does, but I think it saves different tracks of audio and it kind of loses them when you upload to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I'm just amazed and surprised if anything ever works, ever, really, at this point, <laughs> as an iOS developer. <laughs> I don't know. I have very low expectations. Okay, cool. So I wanted to ask you, so what's next for Samplist? What are, what are some of the features coming down the pipeline? Well, uh, right now I'm working on Polyphony, so I want to add a full-fledged uh, sampler, like with chords and all that stuff, and filter 
Uh, also, LFO is in the pipeline, so I want to add an LFO to the, to the filter and also an ADSR envelope because that's badly needed. And I have a couple of more small features like reverse jobs and stuff like that. So I really plan to do it like a, like an emulation of Ableton Simpler. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is really going to take it to the next level. I'm sure there's going to be some people watching that see your story and are inspired to make their own apps now with AudioKit. So what kind of advice do you have for them to get started? Well, um, just if you're planning to build something and you're afraid of starting because you don't know stuff about DSP and all that daunting stuff, just start coding. I mean, it's you discover stuff along the way and you get inspired while doing it. So there's no perfect road. You just start working and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's really great advice. I mean, it's it's like uh, learning kung fu. You can't learn by watching, you know. Exactly, kung fu movies. Yeah, you have to, yeah, have to get in there and get your hands dirty. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, it's uh, you know, programming is hard. Um, you know, you, you'll fail more than you succeed, and you just got to keep going. Um, yeah, but that's how you learn stuff by failing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm saying this more for the benefit of people watching than for us. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> They they only see the success, uh, you know, the success, and they don't see, you know, how many hours you spent over the last years getting to this point, um, which I'm sure yeah. has been difficult. And you're obviously very driven to to get this far. Yeah, it's it's been a rocky road, like over the past three years. But yeah, if you're really driven and you really want to do great stuff, you must go forward. <laughs> So, so now are you thinking that you may want to be like a professional music app developer? Is that, is that a goal or is this kind of a hobby for now? Um, no, I don't see it as a hobby. I, I plan to build several apps using okay. audio because it's, it's really nice. I think they're mostly be sample based because there are a lot of scenes in the app store and right. they're all great and amazing. Uh, but I'm, Focusing more on the, the sample stuff because I really like sampling and had a lot of samples, the, the MPCs, the uh, the Electribe, and they were all great. They all had limitations. So basically, that's why I got into this. I wanted to do my own thing with my own features. Yeah, so yeah. I mainly build the stuff for myself and luckily for others who are passionate about this. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, they say that's the best apps for people that actually build apps for themselves and what they want. And then, you know, you can kind of see the things you wanted there that no one else is doing. And then if people like it, cool. If not, you know, they don't have to buy it. That's that's the great thing, you know. Thank you to all the people who bought it and love it and i promise i'll make it an awesome app because i'm really driven <laughs> and uh, yeah that's about it awesome man as you can tell this is a really fast way to get some ideas down he made this in just a few weeks and i'm excited to see where he takes it next this has been matthew fetcher thanks for watching you can learn more about getting started with audio kit at audiokitpro.com i'll see you soon